Okay. Hey class, we are starting off today with some skills that you need to have at your disposal at all times. I am talking about factoring. Factoring is mm -hmm. a skill that comes up in almost every area of math, the ability to reduce things down to simpler pieces uh, made out of uh, multiplication. So let's go through uh, the opposite of factoring first, which is multiplication, and we'll see some patterns that then we can return to as we look for uh, ways to decompose things into multiplied parts, okay? So we're talking first of all about something like a plus B, or X plus Y, a binomial, something that's made out of two parts separated by addition, and this can be uh, subtraction as well. Y, in this case, could be negative. Uh, and then you just square it, it times itself. Now, the great temptation is to think of this as uh, going to be X squared plus Y squared, but that would be wrong. Why would that be wrong? Well, I'm talking about something that is X plus y long, right? You can see how the length of this segment is x plus y. And then if I square that, that means make a square out of that. And it also needs to be x plus y tall. So now you can see, yes, you do have a part of it that is x squared. And yes, you do have a part of it that is y squared. That's true. But you also have this rectangle over here. How do we find the area of a rectangle? It's width times height. So that's uh, y times x. And then I also have a rectangle over here. What's the area of that rectangle? Well, it's width times height. That's x, y. Now, I've written these two as x, y, and y, x. But you know that those are the same thing. So we can uh, write those as x, y, just to stick with alphabetical order. So what we have here is x squared plus x, y plus x, y plus y squared. And the like terms combine, and we're talking about x squared plus 2x, y plus y squared. That is what we get when we square a binomial. Okay? <clears throat> now, we could, of course, have a negative sign in between which would only change things to mean that the ones that aren't squares have negative uh, area, which gets complicated to think about. But we're just talking about having a pattern that you're looking for in a bunch of numbers and letters and looking for this pattern. Something minus something squared is the first one squared minus 2 times them times each other plus the second one squared. Now, a familiar pattern that you're used to when you see things that have nothing in common, a one binomial plus another binomial, the normal pattern that you go for when you see this is FOIL, right? So that if you have A plus B times C plus D, you're used to doing the firsts, the lasts, the outers, and the inners in that order, and that's FOIL stands for that. But you could also think of it another way. You could also go in a different order, and you don't need to do this regularly. I'm just wanting you to see this, that you could do A times C and A times D plus B times C and B times D, kind of prioritizing the first binomial, in which case you're going to get A times C plus D plus B times C plus D. Just another way to do it. Something like FOIL, but not exactly the same. <clears throat> a pattern to look out for. Now, lastly, you could get what is called a conjugate pair. A conjugate is something that we've seen from Spanish, right? You conjugate verbs in French and Spanish class. And it just means that if you've got something that starts off as x plus y, the conjugate of that is x minus y. Same thing, if you'd started off with a minus, if you'd started off with x minus y, the conjugate of that is x plus y. And when we multiply these together, I'll write it out here a uh, long way for you, is there's going to be some great cancellation that goes on. Is we're, yes, we're going to have firsts and uh, outers 
And, oh, I did not put a minus sign in there. Sorry about that. Uh, firsts and outers and inners and lasts. And you notice I put my like terms together, that I had these guys together, these guys together, these guys together. There's only one thing that actually has a like term to combine with. And when we put this all together, we get x squared plus nothing pl minus y squared. That simplifies to x squared minus y squared, which is the pattern that we're talking about. Something times its conjugate equals the first one squared minus the second one squared. Okay? <clears throat> now, look at this page. Have these patterns in your mind. These are the factoring tools, the main tools of factoring that you should already know from Algebra 2. We're going to also need these to go backwards. This is, out, this is written out as multiplication. You need to be able to see these patterns so commonly that you can take them backwards as well, okay? So factoring is those simple processes done in reverse. Again, we're going to look to see if everybody has anything in common, greatest common factor. Then we're going to look for uh, perfect square trinomials. Do you have something where you've got a, a term that is the, the first one squared? So for example, what if we had k squared plus 12k plus 36? So I look at the first term and I say, is that something squared? Well, duh, it's k squared. That's the name of it. Then I look at the last one and I say, is that something squared? Well, obviously, that's 6 squared. And then I look at the middle, and I say, is it the first one times the second one times 2? And indeed, it is. It is 12, which is 6 times 2, and k, the first term of my binomial. So that means that this is a perfect square trinomial. It's the first one plus the second one squared. Next up, we look for the difference of squares. This is real easy to spot because it's just going to be two numbers uh, separated by a minus sign. And numbers include letters, BTW. So we're saying 25 uh, is a square, and so is b squared. Right? I mean, the square root of the first one is a nice, easy number. The square root of the second one is a nice, easy number. Therefore, this must have come from the first plus the second times the first minus the second. That's difference of squares. As long as the first one is square rootable and the second one is square rootable, everything will be great. And then, of course, there are just those rotten, messy ones that don't uh, clean up very nicely. So, for example, if we had b squared minus 11b plus 28, well, if I'm trying to factor that, there's not a square root of 28 that's any nice number. And so I need to think about what is 28 made out of in terms of multiplication. There's 28, which could be 1 and 28. It could be 2 and 14. It could be 4 and 7. Those are the ways that I can dissect 28 via multiplication. So I'm thinking, the question I'm asking myself that you need to ask yourself over and over again is what multiplies to 28 and adds to negative 11? So I look over here at my possibilities and I say, hmm, how, which of these can make 11 via addition or subtraction? So this could be 12 or 16. This could be uh, 29 or 27. Uh, but this can be 3 and ding, 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 11. And there was much rejoicing. So that means that this is made out of b and 4 and b and 7. And the question is, are they plus or are they minus? 
So if I do them both plus, that will make positive 28 when I switch back to multiplication. But if I make them both minus, then that's the only way that I'm going to get that 11 right there. So that has to be uh, the answer. Now, sometimes the problems get to be a little bit more uh, tricky, and you've got uh, more terms than just two. Grouping is a uh, procedure where we only look uh, two at a time. Later we'll see you can do three at a time or stuff like that, but we won't go there yet. What I'm wanting you to do right now is when you see a problem that's got uh, four terms, your first instinct should be factoring by grouping. So for example, here's a problem that uh, in the past would have daunted you, would have been scary, and instead you're going to look at it and say, I'm just going to take these two at a time and these two at a time. And the way you knew to do that was simply having four terms. It's not going to be a quadratic of the form we've been talking about. Difference of squares, just two terms. Perfect square trinomial, trinomial, three terms. Here, four terms. Quadrinomial, for those of you who love Latin. The first two terms, what's the greatest common factor of the first two terms? Well, I look and say 21 is a multiple of... 7, and so is 35, and then everybody's got at least two p's. So I'm going to take out two p's, and I'm going to take out 7. All right, so what does that leave me in the first one? If I've taken out 7, I'm dividing, that'll leave me with 3 in the numbers and one extra p that I haven't covered. On the second one, 35 divided by 7 is negative 5, but I've taken out all the p's. Don't need to do any more. On this next group, I look and I say, not everybody has a P, so I'm not going to take any of those out. And then is everybody a multiple of 9? No. Is everybody a multiple of 5? No. Everybody's a multiple of 3. So I'm going to take out negative 3, and I'll come back to that negative in just a second. I'm going to take out uh, negative 3, and that leaves me with 3P minus 5. Now, Maybe your instinct was just to take out 3, positive 3, in which case you would not have ended up with the same thing in parentheses here as you did here. That is the sign that your factoring by grouping didn't work. You must get the same thing in parentheses in both cases. Now, you can group these down and say this is all 7p squared minus 3 times 3p minus 5. The temptation, the, the, the urge for some of you, I'm looking at you, is to then write, well, there were two 3p minus 5s. Oh, 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 mm, no. Think about what happens if we try to multiply this back out now. We're going to take the 7p and it's going to land on both of those which was what happened up there. And then we're going to have the minus 3 land on everybody, which is what we did over there. We don't need two 3p minus 5s. One is enough. Don't get carried away. Don't do it. OK? Uh, that is the way to do factoring by grouping. Okay, so one last thing is that this grouping technique is something that helps us avoid guess and check. Now, you will catch me from time to time doing guess and check to factor the really hard ones, but I don't like it. It's really only useful when you've got primes. So wh what am I talking about? For example, if we had uh, 10x squared plus 39 x plus 35. Now you look at this and you say, what a nightmare. This is awful. Nobody would blame you if you just gave up and did the quadratic formula. But that's a lot of work too. You might be desperate enough to try something. This other thing to try, maybe this is new, is split the middle. Have you heard of this? What I mean is we're going to take this middle term and we're going to split it into two pieces. 
That'll give us four terms altogether, and we will do factoring by grouping at that point. How do I split it? How do I know how to split it? There's a trick here. What we do is we take the outer two coefficients, so 10 and 35, and we multiply those together. So obviously 10 times 35 is 350. Now, how can I split up 350 into multiplication? So first choice, 1 and 350, duh. Second choice, I divide that by 2, I get 1 carry the 1, 7 carry the 1, 5. This isn't very exciting. Uh, that's not going to go into 3, little mental notes here, 5 and 2 and 7 and 5. Okay, so that means the next one that I've got as an option is 5, and then what's left is 70. Okay, we're coming down in choices. Next thing would be seven and, let me zoom in here, it's getting away from me. Uh, seven and 50, not bad. Uh, 10 and 35 and 14 and 25. And I think I may be done at that point, yes, okay. When you get down to the square root, you're done. So here are all the ways that I could chop up 35, 350. And I need to find one of them that will add to 39, the middle term that I had over there. I'm just decomposing, ripping apart this 39. And obviously, I had to go all the way to the end. That last one there adds to 35. So that's how I'm going to split it. 14x and 25x make 39x. I've split the middle term into two pieces. There's 10x squared, and there's still 35. I've made a four-term quadrinomial that will now factor easily by grouping. This has a common 2x, which leaves me with 5x plus 7. And this has a common 5, which will leave me with 5x plus 7. Oh, look. It worked. I got the same thing in parentheses. I take it down 2x plus 5 and 5x plus 7. That is split the middle. <clears throat> now, these uh, can be pretty difficult, and it might not work with any of these. Yikes. So last ditch effort, the thing that always works, is the quadratic formula. It's not always fun. You would want there to be some other way for it to factor first to try. But worst case scenario, you can always factor a quadratic with the quadratic formula. Do you know how to sing a quadratic formula? All together now. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Let me write that down. So we've covered a lot of ground here, basic factoring techniques that you should know. We've shown how they are simply the patterns that we learn through repeated multiplication examples. And this then shows us how we can break down any quadratic into uh, simple parts. Now, for proof that you have watched this video, I would like you to come uh, to class next time with a piece of paper where you have solved this equation by splitting the middle. So please demonstrate to me that you have been paying attention by splitting the middle, again, multiplying the outer two coefficients, and then finding some way to take that middle term that then still multiplies to that number but adds to this number. That will then allow you to do factoring by grouping and uh, get this down into two uh, binomials multiplied against each other. So if you have any questions, I'll see you in class. Thanks.